Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's episode of Console. Um, this week we're going to be reviewing a blog post by Nicole Orchard. Um, it went a little viral in the tech blog sphere, um, but most importantly, it um, kind of outlines the things that we've been talking about in the previous two videos. And I thought since this post kind of went a little viral and it was uh, heavily related to what we've been doing in the past couple of videos, it, would, it was worth going over because it gives a high level overview. So in the previous videos, we'd written a lexer and a parser. She talks a little bit about what a lexer and a parser is, but she also talks about um, what the professional compilers do. So uh, uh, we briefly touched on abstract syntax trees in the previous video. We haven't written any of that stuff yet. Um, but most modern compilers have like optimization steps and things like that, which we're obviously not going to write in our uh, very basic programming language. Um, so I thought it was a good to get a, a professional's perspective on what a compiler does. Um, not that I don't believe she's a professional in compiler development, um, but she's talking about um, the tools that the uh, professional compiler developers pr provide. Uh, right, so you're, you, you've gotten a, a one perspective if you've been following along with the videos of like the very basics of a programming language. Well, now we're going to talk about the more advanced uh, professional aspects of compiler development. So, uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. So, here is Nicole's post. Um, as I said, it's very short. Um, you're sensing a theme, I, I, I'm guessing, if you've been following along with the console videos up to this point. I like short blog posts. Um, I feel they get the point across much better if they do it in fewer words. Um, so you can see what she's talking about here right off the bat is her conception of what a compiler is. It's a front end, quote unquote, uh, which is what we wrote in the previous video when we were writing the lexer and the parser. There's an optimizer step. Um, which I mentioned in the introduction uh, about the ASTs. Um, the optimizer is like running algorithms on those ASTs. Uh, we haven't talked about that part yet. And then there's the back end, which is going to spit out the machine code. In our very basic uh, compiler, we're um, just going to generate C code from the basic code. But in the, ex the example we're going to be walking through here with Clang, it's going to take C++ code and turn it into no kidding assembly language. Uh, so you can see here, I'm just opening up the Clang documentation in case I wanted to, wanted to read that after I had finished um, recording these videos. There wasn't too much useful information in that, so I wouldn't bother. So um, right here what we're doing is uh, we're just writing a very basic C++ program. And here all it's doing is saying hello compiler in printf and returning zero. Which, uh, by the way, I used to be a competitive programmer in C++. And this is the first time I've written a C++ program in years. Uh, it really brought me back to the good old days of uh, spending way too much time on algorithms and data structures. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, the general gist here is we're going to write this very basic C++ program and then we're going to compile it and we're going to follow it through the various stages that she mentions above uh, through the front end, the optimizer, and the quote unquote back end. Uh, we're going to be doing all those things and analyzing the output through Clang. Um, right here, I'm not using Clang. I'm using G++ just to make sure that I can actually compile this thing, that I didn't have any syntax errors. Like I said, it's been years. Um, uh, one thing I did want to call out is I didn't have uh, the two uh, command lines that we use in, in this video. I have Clang. Well, I, I should say I. Mac comes uh, pre-built with Clang at least the Mac operating system I was using. It doesn't have opt or LLVM though, so uh, we're just gonna have to trust her that the output she's giving us in the blog is actually correct. So right here, she's talking about the preprocessor. It's like the, the very, very front end of the front end, if you will. Um, here she's talking about how the Clang compiler will take the C++ and sort of pre-process the C++ into, she keeps calling it IR throughout the, uh, the blog post, but that stands for internal representation. And so most compilers need to maintain state and uh, keep a list of all the registers that they can assign code to and all this other stuff. Um, and that's why they need to keep this quote unquote uh, internal representation. And that, I, as I keep saying, that was what I was doing in my college compilers classes. We were maintaining like lists of registers that we could assign variables to and all these other things. But uh, anyway, this is 
the, the contents effectively of, of the uh, preprocessor uh, that she had us go through and run that clang command in order to see what the preprocessor looks like. Um, you can see it's a lot of gobbledygook, but it's still, at, at this point, it still at least looks like C++. So right here, you can see she's talking about the lexer and the parser, right? Which you should be familiar with if you've been following along up to this point. Um, she's pointing out some of the things we saw in the previous videos, uh, where there's like punctuation, there's a keyword, there's an identifier, there's a literal, and there's a comment, right? So there, these are the sort of types that she's uh, constructing in her head when she's talking about the Clang compiler and what the lexer is doing, which we wrote a lexer, right? So you should know what this tokenization means. And then also we wrote the parser, um, so you can see how she's talking about how that outputs an AST. We didn't go so far as to construct an actual AST in our parser, which was actually a good thing, I think, because it made things much more simple. But um, Clang itself, when it does you know, run, it, run through the lexer and then the parser, it does actually have an AST that it spits out for the optimizer to go through this tree and actually optimize things, which uh, one thing I did want to point out is in my compilers course in college, we actually didn't do any of the optimization, right? It was only a semester long course, so there was only so much we could do, but we did construct the AST, but we didn't have time to do any optimizations. The professor was really good though. He'd point out like, oh, see how you could do some sort of optimization on the tree here, there, whatever throughout the course. So right here is uh, where we're taking the clang commands to actually uh, spit out the IR from the AST. Uh, so we're basically just running a command to do that and then checking out the output of that um, and once again it's it's looking a little less like c++ even further like up up there before it was looking more you could see these char star stars and all these other things um, but now after it's been ran through and turned into an internal representation um, it's got some of the similar properties right you can see a main function there and a define kind of but you also have all these other things like alloc and then you have i32 and all this other stuff going on so it's looking even less like c++ at this point so here's when we're getting into the more complex aspects of the compiler right up until this point you've seen kind of we've written these two other pieces um, in the previous videos but now we're going to start running these optimizations against the asts right and uh, clang provides this tool opt right where we can spit out the optimized AST um, from the previous files that we'd created before. Uh, so that's what we're doing here, but as I said, uh, I don't have opt on here. I didn't want to go install it and mess around with my path just to make sure that I was getting the same output as her. But you can see the output she's providing us down here, and you can see that it's much, much shorter. The, the, the code that's, the optimized code that's spit out is much shorter than the, the code from before. Uh, and that's because this one's been optimized for space. So you can see the O2 past the opt command. So you can see that there's four lines here, there's a bunch of extra code that doesn't really need to exist, whereas in here there's only those two lines in the main function. And that's what the optimizer has done, is it's read the AST, figured out what, thing, what lines does it need to keep and what lines does it not need to keep, and it's removed the ones it doesn't need anymore and made them more efficient the ones that it does it has kept uh, you can see here she's pointing out that there's a couple other places where you could do optimizations here right where it will bundle and unbundle different things right like for example here it sees that there's like uh, these uh, 5 10 and c equals a plus b it, it can the opt the compiler could figure out that those really don't need to be three different variables in three different registers and just move them all into one and that's what she's kind of pointing out here so the thing to be aware of here at this point is that your compiler can do all sorts of stuff to your code that you're not even aware of it can remove lines it can unroll for loops it can do all sorts of stuff so be very wary uh, of like that the code you're writing is actually the code that you're actually running uh, depending on if you're using optimizations in your compiler or not okay and this is the last part of the blog post where she talks about the back end of the compiler right uh, llc is Clang's, you know, version of the back-end piece, if you will. Um, and basically what we're doing here is we're going to take that AST that we've generated, this optimized AST, if you run it through the optimizer, and you're going to create actual assembly code, right? And that's kind of, you can think of as like the base layer. Uh, eventually, you know, uh, assembly gets, you know, co compiled down even further into binary, but assembly you can think of as like the lowest level that, you know, humans and computers can kind of both understand. And so that's effectively what 
when, where you draw the line, say your compiler is done, right? It's taken your C code, we've translated it into an internal representation with an AST, and then we've spit out assembly code that can just be run from there, basically. And you can see that uh, what gets, actually this is the, the, the uh, assembly for, for the Hello World program that we created before. It's just these you know small series of instructions with some main function defined somewhere, right? And then our string defined here, down here at the bottom, as an ASCII character that says Hello Compiler. Uh, so effectively, that's what your C code looks like when it's actually running on your machine. All right, that is everything for this week's episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you're notified when console is released every week. Um, this episode was pretty short, pretty brief, like I said, but I just wanted to give you a professional perspective, a, a more professional perspective at least, of what we've been doing in the previous videos uh, to give you some context on some of the comments I made in those videos while we were going through and making our own programming language. Uh, that's everything for this week. See you next week.